Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship. And this fourth Sunday of Easter is always Good Shepherd Sunday, um, where we look at Psalm 43, Psalm 23, and um, John chapter 10, where Jesus tells us that he is the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. And, And today we especially look at how it wasn't just the things Jesus said, but the things he did. Um, that he rose from the dead for us, that means he's our Savior. Um, This morning, I will begin with our opening hymn, hymn 804, I Am Jesus, Little Lamb. Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
we continue with the Kyrie, the Lord have mercy, on page 174. Um, the congregation will sing the responses. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. We continue with our hymn of praise. This is the Feast of uh, Victory. Um, hymn 938, and we'll sing stanzas 1 through 3. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, you are the good shepherd who laid down your life for the sheep. Lead us now to the still waters of your life-giving word, that we may abide in your Father's house forevermore. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The Apostle Paul uh, preaches a sermon um, to, in one of the synagogues in, in one of the first places he stopped. Our first reading is taken from Acts chapter 13. After the reading from the Law and the Prophets, the leaders of the synagogue sent word to them saying, Brothers, if you have a word of exhortation for the people, please speak. 
Standing up, Paul motioned with his hand and said, Fellow children of Abraham, and you God-fearing Gentiles, it is to us that this message of salvation has been sent. The people of Jerusalem and their rulers did not recognize Jesus, yet in condemning him they fulfilled the words of the prophets that are read every Sabbath. Though they found no proper ground for a death sentence, they asked Pilate to have him executed. When they had carried out all that was written about him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead, and for many days he was seen by those who had traveled with him and from Galilee to Jerusalem. They are now witnesses to our people. We tell you the good news. What God promised our ancestors, he has fulfilled for us, their children, by raising up Jesus. As it is written in the second psalm, You are my son, today I have become your father. God raised him from the dead so that he will never be subject to decay. As God has said, I will give you the Holy One and sure blessings promised to David. So it is also stated elsewhere, you will not let your Holy One see decay. Now, when David had served God's purpose in his own generation, he fell asleep and he was buried with his ancestors and his body decayed. But the one whom God raised from the dead did not see decay. Therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin, a justification you were not able to obtain under the law of Moses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We continue with the psalm of the day, Psalm 23 in the front of your hymnal.
Our second reading is a promise from our good shepherd of the day that he will wipe every tear from our eyes. Our second reading is taken from Revelation chapter 7. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. All the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell down on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Praise and glory and wisdom and thanks and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, These in white robes, who are they? Where did they come from? I answered, Sir, you know. And he said, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And He who sits on the throne will shelter them with His presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Uh, we continue with the gospel acclamation at the top of 179, and um, we will sing it. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 10. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple courts, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were there gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me. But you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 552, The King of Love My Shepherd Is.
grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. The world is loud. And I don't just mean road construction and traffic. The world is full of voices trying to get your attention. It's trying to tell you what to buy, what news to be angry about, what politicians to like or dislike, what, what's true, what's important, what, what, uh, what, how to make you happy, where, where to find purpose. Any opinion you can think of, there's an opinion about what your opinion ought to be. There's only one voice worth listening to. Listen to your shepherd. Jesus was in Jerusalem for the Feast of Dedication, which is also known to us today as Hanukkah. And people were gathered there to, to celebrate. They were reminiscing about the, the good old days when their nation was this uh, world power, when they had a, an influence on the global political scene. And so it was with this, with this thought, with this desire for political power, that a group of Jews went searching for Jesus. It was sometime around November or December. For us, 50 degrees is you know, a nice spring day. For those living in Jerusalem, this was a brisk winter day. And so Jesus was in Solomon's colonnade, this nice covered walkway where you could escape from the elements. And it was here that he was surrounded and trapped by a group of Jews. How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. That sounds like a very reasonable request, doesn't it? I mean... Without any context, we could easily paint these people as, as people devoted to God, God-fearing Jews who just wanted to be sure that Jesus wasn't a false Messiah. After all, there had been lots of people who came before him saying that they were God's chosen one. What, what made them so sure that Jesus wasn't just another voice in the crowd looking for power? The context around their question shows us what they were really asking. Because Jesus had made it plain to them who he was. The last three chapters of the book of John are Jesus basically saying, I am the Son of God, and the Jews talking among themselves saying, um, but are you really? And so Jesus told them, before Abraham was born, I am. Before Abraham even existed, Jesus was there. Basically, he told them that he is true God, and so they tried to stone him. Then, Jesus performed a miracle. He took a man who was born blind and healed him. You'd think that would have been the proof they needed to back up his words. Well, the Jews, they investigated the miracle, and they, some of them came to the conclusion that, yes, this is the Messiah. Others, though, decided, well, it's true Jesus did a miracle, but he did it on the Sabbath day when you're not supposed to do any work. So we can't actually count this as a true miracle. So the real motivation for their question, tell us plainly, wasn't a sincere desire for the truth. What they really wanted was for Jesus to put an end to the arguing that was dividing their power. So they wanted him to, to put an end to it. Tell us, are you the Christ? And if he said yes, well then they could kill him and be done with it. Or... Or at the very least, maybe he would say yes, and he would be the kind of Christ that they wanted him to be. Not a Christ who preaches about love and forgiveness, but a Christ who, who taught about wrath and the destruction of the Romans. A, a, a Christ who would start a kingdom of prosperity for them in their world right then and there. Jesus' answer catches them off guard. I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify about me, but you do not believe me because you are not my sheep. Jesus' words had told them who he was, the Son of God. Jesus' miracles and actions backed that up. They were testimony from, from God himself that Jesus was who he said he was. And ironically, what Jesus offered them was far better than anything they wanted. Forgiveness and eternal life. They wanted earthly blessings, political power. So they rejected him. They did not believe. They were not his sheep. They would not listen to his voice. What voices do you hear in your life? What do they offer you? 
we have our own internal monologue that, that kind of wants proof. If, if Jesus would just give me some sign to prove he is who he says, if he would just answer my prayer, solve this problem, end this illness, well then I would know for sure and I would have a kind of security. We have voices clamoring for our support. If you just vote for this person, uh, they will solve this problem and everything will be right in the world. Voices clamoring for your money. Buy this really cool product and you'll be happy. Voices promising you rest. Just get through this week. Get this homework done. Get this project finished. And, and then you'll be good to go. All of these voices with such grand promises. Even if they, even if they deliver, even if they give you what you want, you soon find that you're not satisfied. You'll never have enough. There'll always be another problem, another stressor, another uh, product to buy or, or doubts to address. It's like walking into a store on Black Friday and, and there's so many people there pressing in around you and their conversations are just like the sound of, of rushing water. On top of that, you've got the uh, salespeople trying to give you their products and their samples. The TV is flashing their their sales, the loudspeaker announcing the next big event. It's all a deafening roar. When someone familiar says your name, it cuts through all the other sound. You turn to see who it is. There is your shepherd. You know his voice because you're his sheep. He did that for you. He, he won you, made you his sheep when he laid down his life for you. And now you know him and he knows you. All these other voices, whatever they have to offer you, it, it's, it's small potatoes. It, it's temporary. These, these little things to allegedly make your life better. As tempting as they can be, look at what Jesus offers you. We want some temporal proof. If Jesus, if you're there, fix this problem. He instead destroys death and rises from the dead. How is that for proof? What Jesus wants to offer you starts right now and lasts to eternity. In Him, you shall never perish. The, that life has already begun. When, when we've done something terrible, something unforgivable in the eyes of the world, Something that maybe somebody has actually even told you is unforgivable. Maybe, maybe the person that finds it unforgivable is yourself. Listen to the voice of your shepherd. Through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone believes is free from every sin. If you haven't been able to set yourself free from a sin, God already has. And what God proclaims trumps whatever we feel. So many things try to offer you happiness, but there's only one voice that, that gets rid of the, the sadness of sin, that whatever things may look like now, Jesus' promise to you is already yours. Your robes have been made white in the blood of the Lamb. Never again will you hunger. Never again will you thirst. The sun will not beat down on your, you, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be your shepherd. He will lead you to springs of living water, and God will wipe every tear from your eyes. Jesus offers you security. Every other uh, promise of security is no better than a percentage. I mean, uh, a politician can, can say they're going to eliminate crime, but really all they can do is kind of lower it so you don't notice it as much. Seatbelts can't guarantee that your, your life is safe. Like, even medicine that gives you really good odds, all it's giving you are are odds. But Jesus says, no one will snatch them out of my hand. Your shepherd knows you. Your shepherd loves you. Never will he leave you or forsake you. Picture a little boy. He's, he's all alone on a ferry crossing some body of water. A storm whips up. The, the, the wind and the waves are, are all around him. and He's got in his hand a photograph. It's the last remaining photo he has of his mom. And so he is clutching that to his chest. No amount of wind or rain is going to, to get that from him. In fact, we could even say nothing in all creation will loosen his grip on that photo. Jesus cares about you more. It isn't just a figure of speech when we say there is nothing in all creation that can loosen Jesus' grip. It's the same grip that his father has on you. 
the one whom there is nothing greater than. Jesus and the Father are one. And, and not just in the way that they both are one in their desire to care for you and, and love you. Yes, that's true. They are one in essence. They are one in power, and they are holding you in their hands all the way to eternity. There's a video online of some Norwegian shepherd, and a group of tourists is there, and he challenges them to try and, and call over his sheep. So they start trying to imitate his call, and they get enthusiastic, and they're trying to do whatever they can to bring these sheep over. The sheep don't even look up from the grass. And then the shepherd stands up, and he begins to call them, and immediately they, they look up. He calls again, and immediately they come leaping over to him, and, and he walks among them, and they, they follow him, and they're, they're jumping up and bleating for, bleating for joy. Many voices call for your attention. They may enthusiastically promise you all sorts of things, but you know your shepherd's voice. He made you one of his sheep. He knows you. He cares for you. And nothing will snatch you from his hand. Listen to your shepherd. Amen. The peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand. The service continues on page 181, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Today we remember the mothers who loved us even before we were born, who endured the trauma of childbirth and who cared for us when we could not care for ourselves. On this day and on other days, cause us to recall the hours they spent and the sacrifices they made so that we could be content and carefree as we grow up. So many women have influenced our lives. Lead us to think about their wisdom, compassion, patience, and encouragement and give us opportunities to say thank you when we can. Comfort all women who long to have children but have not, that they may find their consolation in you and your unfailing love. Lead us to express our thanks and help us to imitate their care for us. Loving Shepherd of the sheep, strengthen our faith to follow where you lead, to the green pastures of your word, the quiet waters of our baptism, and the gracious table of your body and blood where our cup overflows with your forgiving love. Guide us to find in you the gate that leads to safety and good pastures. Good Shepherd, lead us. Guard and protect us from those who want to lead us astray and snatch us out of your hand. Give us courage to fight against the devil and wisdom to recognize false teachers. Lead us to honor and follow those you have called to shepherd your flock, the church. Good Shepherd, guide us. Let your rod and your staff comfort us and all your sheep in times of sickness and sadness, and especially when we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. May we find in your redemption and your Father's resolve the unbreakable promise that we will dwell in your house forever. Good Shepherd, console us. Move us to reach out to sheep who are not yet part of our sheep pen, but whom you have claimed as your own. Give us your passion to search for the sheep who are lost and lead us to rejoice when they have been found. Good Shepherd, inspire us. We thank you for all the blessings we have gained from your goodness, family and friends, wealth and health, work and leisure. Give us wisdom to long for and cherish 
your more precious gifts, your word and sacraments, so that your goodness and love may follow us all the days of our life. Good Shepherd, hear us. Amen. Freely have your gifts been granted. Freely may your servants give. Yours the gold and yours the silver. Yours the wealth of land and sea. We are but stewards of your bounty held in solemn trust. Amen. Please stand. Something to note about the new hymnal is that every non-communion Sunday will end uh, with page 171, and that's where the, the service continues from today. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. 
We continue with our closing hymn, Jerusalem the Golden, hymn 889. Please be seated. Good morning. Welcome once again. Um, the only announcement I have is that um, we are collecting an offering for LWMS. Um, I believe it's for campus ministry, or that, that's one of the options. That's one of the options. Um, and if you have any more questions about that, you can see Susan Salisbury. Um, but that is on the, uh, the table where we sometimes have snacks. Um, there's a little collection there. Um, are there any other announcements today? All right, well, it's good to be back and worshiping with you again, and have a blessed week.